as he said, as soon as he got to penis and nuts, he was like, well, this is happening. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, your weekly look at all things Cinema Sins, TV Sins, and Commercial Sins. I'm your host, Aaron, but not that Aaron, of course. And this week, I'm joined by Cinema Sins staff member Ian. Hello. Ian, how Hello. you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You sound I'm like ba- you're from London. <laughs> you sound like you're from <laughs> London. I don't get that at all. In fact, I this is an immediate story before I say hello to anybody. I'm back in America, which is awesome. It's amazing. Back living at, at Mr. Dice's. And we went to get some coffee. It's a coffee place that we went to a lot last time I was here. And the person that served us just went onto the radio. Went, um, 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 um. I didn't hear what she said, but immediately somebody came around the corner and said, you're back. I'm so sorry about the queen. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, that's, that was a lot. <laughs> that was that was an immediate, immediate greeting. It's like, I'm happy to be back. I'm glad you remember me. And it's okay. It's fine. We weren't that close. <laughs> well, that's what, it was so sweet. I think I was talking with Aaron. People kept on texting you about the queen. Like, I'm so sorry for uh, you lost. Day. It's like, she's not, she's not my aunt. Like... <laughs> she's not my grandma like she's everyone's grandma but it was all day long oh and some of them were tongue-in-cheek just like i guess i'm sorry and some of them were genuinely like i'm sorry i didn't send this sooner like the next day and like no you're fine it's okay i didn't need an immediate apology we, we've lost touch over the years i'm i'm sorry she's gone but yeah it's it's okay i don't i don't need your condolences don't apologize for the queen dying apologize for 1776 like (laughs) yeah if you're gonna apologize for some stuff then exactly just give me some country back Amazing. (laughs) but yeah it's nice to be back that sounds like a perfect segue it feels like we're actually here for a purpose we're here to do this inside scoop so we should probably do that what's he building in there We'll kick off with the Monday video, Rick and Morty 3x7. So we have the Rick Lantis mix-up. This is a Jonathan and Daniel script. Some mm. of the things that we liked uh, just right off the back, I the, the whole Atlantis thing is just mind-boggling. because And they're totally right sitting that because I didn't think it was something I needed until they said they just got back from a trip to Atlantis. And now it's like, okay, but now I want you to go to Atlantis. And I'm mad yeah. that here we are three seasons later and there's still no Atlantis episode. And maybe it never happened. Maybe there is something we're missing out on. Maybe there's a joke that we missed. Or maybe the the last episode ever, maybe that will end with, okay, off to Atlantis. And <laughs> just completely troll us and we never see it. Also, more lasers? Agreed. <laughs> and then it's in removal. Reversing. Perfect. Yeah, I love that. And then this show does the wildest, most nonsensical nonsensical bullshit and somehow swings it back to make you feel something cliche. Only Rick and Morty. Just Rick and Morty in in one sentence. Um, like, I obviously didn't write on this one, but I love Jonathan and Daniel's scripts because their scripts are, like, super thoughtful and intellectual. And I love reading that stuff. It always makes me think. And, like, the stuff that... It would go by so quick and just miss it. So one of the sins was... Um, bandaging your wound on the outside of your clothes. Yeah. And it's just a shot of Rick putting a bandage over his shoulder, fully uniformed. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's a dumb thing to do. <laughs> like, that's not going to help anybody. But I love having that. I love having that eye. I love the delivery on Cool Rick, which is like obviously a, a Family Guy reference, which just, man, Aaron's delivery on that was so funny. I'm and... just impressed that he can actually like verbalize. What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, he can actually say it. Yeah. Put that silent H before the R. But I love that that, that scene has like a couple of different levels to it. Um, the other scene I had down was um, brain secretion wafer cookies are my least favorite secretion wafer <laughs> cookies. Because I was expecting that to go like just wafer cookies. But it's like, no, no, no. There's some secretion wafer cookies that the narrator does like. It's just the brain ones where he draws the line. <laughs> it's so great. Well, and then so the good. whole run about how is wafer cookies enough of a popular thing that there's a whole factory making tons of these and like like isn't the point of wafer cookies to get like a ton for like 60 cents yeah exactly which is why you need a whole factory to make enough to make a profit yeah i mean that part makes (laughs) sense but i don't i don't think there's any demand for them i mean other than i think like sunday school you know I think in England, I would have battled against that sin and be like, nope, this isn't going in the script. We need a factory of wafer cookies. Like those, those the wafer thingy. We have the pink ones at, at, uh-huh. in England. They're amazing. They're so good. 
Yeah, I like them. I every now and then buy them, but again, I can get like a brick for like 29 cents. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> isn't that the best thing about America? Just giant portion sizes for we'll get there. It's my favorite. Well, that's just a little preview for Behind the Center this week. We'll get there at some point. Mm -hmm. I did reach out to Jonathan because I wanted to know, because this is one of the things that just didn't compute in my brain. Uh, there's a there's a sin that just says, uh, so the sin, as always, is Joe Walsh. Like, that's kind of how it ends. Mm. There's no music playing because to avoid copyright issues and whatnot. But of course, yeah. apparently there's a song playing there. Is Joe Walsh like an inside joke or is it like somebody that did something in the 80s that I'm too young to understand or whatever? <laughs> you young fool. Turns out he did do something in the 80s that I'm too young to understand. He was in a band <laughs> called The Eagles. <laughs> he did The Eagles. He did indeed. Yeah. Anyway, J uh, Jonathan just saying they're playing a song called In the City uh, by Joe Walsh, which is just being silly and I'm not much of an Eagles fan. So you heard it here first. Jonathan is not an Eagles fan. Jonathan hates Joe Walsh specifically. That's, let's put that out there and make sure everyone knows. <laughs> so if you thought hey i think jonathan and i could be friends but uh, man i just i wonder what his taste <laughs> in music is like because i really like the eagles got some bad news nope. for you <laughs> Sorry, guys, if that was what you were pinning your hopes on. I love the randomness. And sometimes it is just the head scratching. It's like, wait, what am I missing? Like, what, what did he do? Why are we sinning him? Should I know something? I just want to know, uh, this is the other question I have about the video. Is the sock in the garage going to be the new bowl of fruit in the living room? The thing that the, the people in the comments got behind was that sock and the realism of it. Like, multiple people were like, you shouldn't be sending that. That's the most realistic thing I've seen on Rick and Morty. Like, every garage has that sock. I wonder if every dimension has that sock there. I, it's something to, let's immediately stop the podcast and just watch every single episode and start noting it down. I just want to see the sock become the new thing where you, where you have to sin it, not for just being there, but you have to find new ways to sin it. Kind of like yes, the bowl of fruit. exactly. That, now you have the bowl of fruit and the sock. Maybe one day they'll meet. I mean, I'm hoping that the series is like really putting some subtle jokes in there and we'll eventually see a team up or something and they were the villains all along. It wouldn't be beyond Rick and Morty to have like some stuff that they set up in season one that still hasn't paid off. I would I would love that. Yeah, that's all I had. Did you have other things? Um, no, that's everything I had for that one. This one, I, I know we'll have some more things to talk about because you mm. wrote on this CinemaSins Tuesday video yeah, for did. Jeepers Creepers. You and Aaron writing on this. All right, so you wrote on this. Uh, mm. Was this your first time watching this movie? Heck yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay i've never seen this before uh but i have seen oh, the sins video so i feel like i've seen the movie so uh -huh. you have you have i feel like no one's actually seen this movie i think everybody says that they have and everyone has fond memories of it but no one's actually watched deepest creepers it's <laughs> so strange like i was convinced i'd seen it until about five minutes in i was like no i definitely have not seen this movie what i figured out is that i'd actually seen the sequel <laughs> but I there was a seen... lot of people saying that in the comments like i saw two and three and then yeah convinced my dad to let me watch the first one because i saw like mm -hmm. the the sequel and I, I have some fond memories of the second one which i think is set on a bus but this is just i did not have any fun with this i was like is this a classic everyone like what you like but it felt almost like a parody but it didn't quite have the weight or like the what are you actually trying to say that is parodying the genre and it just it isn't it's just like a straight up odd supernatural slasher flick with not a lot of flashing and a heck of a lot of staring <laughs> this has got like one of my favorite bonus rounds like it's so good it hit me about halfway through the movie that i was like man he's making some really weird faces Sometimes with bonus rounds, we're always tempted to do it with names as well sometimes. Like if somebody's name is said a lot, sometimes it doesn't always work. But the stares combined with the facial expressions of like, oh, what's his name? Uh, Justin Derry? Long. Yeah, Derry. It's, just, it's so great. He like just pulls some absolutely bizarre faces. And you can like cut together a 60 minute movie of just them staring at each other. It's insane. Well, and what's crazy is there was so much footage of staring, but really the only stuff you showed in the bonus round was staring at the camera but there was equally probably mm. as many shots of like staring at something but you would be kind of over the shoulder oh 100 percent. yeah like so one of the I, things that I... I really liked where you were just like one mississippi two mississippi three like <laughs> actually counting it out i thought that was hilarious it one mississippi two mississippi yeah, like it took six three mississippi. mississippis for her to, she should have done something at three mississippis that's amazing yeah this this definitely warrants sanction on two mississippi at least yeah it's so fun <laughs> but like there was so much staring and the same facial expression mm. every time and kind of back to your meta point there was the thing where the sister like says 
like don't go in there like don't you know what happens when they oh, go in yeah. there and you were just like this yeah, is everyone hates it when people make the stupid decisions and don't hang back it's like yeah we know but you're still gonna do it this isn't as meta as you think you'll be well and this moment might be meta but the whole rest of the movie abandons that concept where uh-huh. scream kind of sticks to the whole thing throughout that's why it works yeah the bug becomes the feature in scream but in here it's just a bug that knows it's a bug and doesn't do anything about it <laughs> it's yeah. amazing I mean, this is one of those but, that like again i haven't seen the movie but this movie mm. would infuriate me because like you spend so much time talking about it, it's so important they have the ability to just drive by and call the cops and leave like there's no reason yeah. for them to go back and then when they do call the cops like they go to the diner and they're just like, yeah, mm-hmm. sure, like whatever. They, like, of course, the cops have to be the biggest idiots on the planet. Like, I would hate this yeah. movie. Me and Aaron both ended it, and usually we we try and stay positive, but we're like, man, maybe we needed to have watched this when it came out in 1992, and we're like, no, 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 this came out in like 2002. <laughs> like, this isn't as old as you think it is either. It's it doesn't even have that going for it it's wild the pacing is all over the place the tension at the beginning with the car chase is great it's great if you never see the creeper like it i think this would be a better movie if you Mm. never ever ever see the creeper but aaron made a great point when he he sent it by saying so this is just like a longer episode of buffy yay (laughs) it's like in theory that should be good but this feels so much like a buffy episode that's been stretched into a feature length movie but with less like less characters to invest in sure i, I want to i want to ask right off the top um do you know is there a specific reason this movie was chosen there's like a reboot coming out yes okay there you go yeah i uh which one of you assholes picked the dr seuss dub of jeepers creepers <laughs> I love that because it's not just like the Dr. Seuss version. It's as if you can go into the DVD menu and change it to Dr. Seuss. I wish. Right now I'm thinking That's of like so all the different movies that we could do for that. That'd be incredible. It'd be so great. <sighs> That'd be amazing. And then the, uh, the uh, just like the way this one was worded, the, the, the cats are even getting out of there, even though dying from curiosity is kind of their thing. <laughs> Perfect. It's just so brilliant. great just to compare their curiosity. And we already mentioned the bonus round, but I also really love the speed board of the missing persons board. Everybody was named wrong. Multiple names were used. Um, The ages were all wrong. One of the descriptions was, this person likes to take uh, candy from strangers. I was like, on a bolo? Like, really? Like, are you telling people to go out there with candy? But me and Aaron both wrote multiple sins on this board. So collectively, I would guess that we spent an hour each sinning this board and putting it together and it became the beast that we see in the video. But this board, usually when you see these notice boards or newspapers, they're a gift of some sort. But this was like a deliberate gift wrapped in a bow that just had some deliberate nonsense on it that we we could have spent so much more time diving into that that board is incredible i like to imagine you and aaron uh like standing in front of aaron's tv with like a bulletin board and <laughs> strings tied together like that it's yes, always sunny like in philadelphia I mean. stuff. yes <laughs> that's not far off um <laughs> there's another one that's worded incredibly um and the lead-in is the psychic on the phone it says um you found its house of pain and this scene is just makes sense because this movie jumps around, it jumps around, it jump cuts, jump scares, and I frown. And I just it's amazing. It's great. I was annoyed that I didn't get that didn't find that reference. Well done, Aaron. I, I so I, I thought about that and then kinda like you were talking with uh with the way that Aaron can like diction, that's the word I'm looking for. How mm-hmm. he has such good diction he can kind of do this. But yeah, it was just it's just one of those it was it was just brilliant. It's uh, just perfect. It's so funny. Because it, you catch on I caught on halfway through. Like, mm. oh, this is a jump around like <laughs> this theory. is what they're doing. Yeah, it's so yeah. much fun. In terms of like behind the scenes, we had real trouble getting this video even up onto YouTube. Oh. It's with horror films. So this got flagged yeah. as inappropriate for children, which basically means that advertisers won't be interested in it in it either which means that something we left in there was really graphic and it's really tricky in horror movies when you're in the middle of sinning we try to catch it during the edit process as well but we we just missed it on this one so we had to go through the video and highlight everything that it could possibly be so we just had this bumper list of well there's a decapitation there that man has a hole in his body that guy's face is covered in blood that woman is being held up with a knife and they say this thing here and just there's another decapitation over there and it was just like picking what to cut out without neutering the video entirely and 
without it just being a big old blurry mess. So yeah, we had to spend another couple of hours going through it and editing it down. Eventually got cleared and made it up onto the channel. But there was a couple of decapitated heads that were rightfully flagged that we blurred and removed <laughs> and then the video was was allowed up. <laughs> it's... Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Decapitated head. See, this is why I couldn't do the editor's job. I would just blur the entire screen out of laziness. And it's it can be quite inconsistent because sometimes you can get away with blood, sometimes you can't. It's so, so tricky to to get that sweet spot. But yeah, we had a win window and we managed to manage to spin it around. But yeah, the editors did a great job on cutting out the, the bits we requested while still having the video make sense. I have some high praise for the editors later as well. Oh, um, I think I know what you're going to say. I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what, what, uh, what else do you have for the show? Because the only thing I, I just want to mention was, I, I just I also love the outtakes for this one. It was one of those where, like, I was like, oh, I really liked that one. Oh, I really liked that one. And then there's <laughs> there's the Scooby-Doo one with, like, Creeper. And, like, that Creeper! one's really good. And then Creeper! the very next one is where the Creeper opens his mouth, and it's the Dumb and Dumber noise. And, like, yes. I started cackling. Because it was just like, I would have never thought to put that in, but it, it's it's just brilliant. We've had like a run of good outtakes lately. We do know what the other person's outtakes are, but we don't usually look, not too much, until we actually see the actual, the whole video come together. And sometimes you'll have some back-to-back -back that we didn't even coordinate with each other on, and they just work perfectly. Um, it's such a fun part of the video. Uh, yeah, so what else do you have? Um, I love The Shape of Slaughter. Um, that was yeah. such an Aaron sin. I love it because... It, it fits so perfectly. Um, and the most brutal sin that I wrote for this one was uh, when the psychic is spared. I said, Behold, she is spared! Likely because the creeper knows the psychic can do more damage to society over their lifetime than it will ever <laughs> achieve in the space of 23 days. And I was like, is that going to stay in? Is that too harsh? But there's some there's some truth in there and I think it's nice to share a point of view sometimes. <laughs> And the singing is always great. Just when the creeper, when we first find out that it has wings, <laughs> I went straight into like our Slack channel and I was like, I'm watching Jeepers Creepers and this motherfucker has wings? And everyone that's seen Jeepers Creepers was like, oh yeah, it does. <laughs> like, what? Why does it have wings? This makes no sense. But to, to pair that with just the sudden Jeremy singing like, in the arms of an angel fly away. <laughs> was so good i if i don't remember there being a note for that but his like really wispy weary delivery of the of the song was so great against just like the wing popping out in the middle of the road it's so great i think that's everything i had for that one what a, what a complicated video that was well, well just it's just surprising like going into the comments and seeing that video like there's lots of praise for that movie like somebody put this mm. is my favorite movie of all time and i'm so happy you guys finally did it and it's like love what you love it's one of my favorite things about going into the comments on the videos is how many people come to the video saying this is my favorite movie of all time i'm so glad you're sending it and i'm like yes i love it i think it's so so great because it kind of gives us a lot of like kind of freedom to make the jokes knowing that we're not being hurtful like we're not deliberately trying to upset anybody it's just all movies do this stuff and it's yeah. just it's fun to point it out well uh let's move on to the uh wednesday video the boys this is season one episode two i asked aaron if there was a specific reason why we did it and uh oh, sorry not we why you guys did it and he said nope we just wanted to do more of the boys so mm -hmm. yeah i think when we were making that decision season three was out and like having all sorts of like conversations and buzz about it so i think it was just time to dip back in and i am desperate to do more of these i love the boys so much i want to get all of season one done but dang you tv for having so much tv at the minute like there is so much that we can't sin right now so this episode of the boys uh the, sorry this tv sins episode covering the boys is no no, no we write by... the episodes as well <laughs> <laughs> written by jonathan and aaron uh working together on this one and yeah. uh episode's called cherry by the way it's second episode of the series yeah, we, we are i already said it earlier but there's the whole you sound from london you sound like you're from london just every time just Immediate because forgetting sarah marshall is maybe my favorite comedy uh depending on the day it's always funny to do pointing out that when a train's not doing his live stream and then the views start going down when it becomes a train wreck and you're like no no, no this isn't how youtube works like it's so great like do you not realize that this would be the best thing for ratings ever they should have rigged it this way deliberately 
Uh, I do have I do have some fun behind the scenes stuff here too, but I I also have to point out um, at the very end where they're talking about where the deep explodes and they're like it, the all the blood got on Huey and it didn't get on the walls at all, and then mm. of course it ends with that clearly wrecked him. That's uh, the best. <laughs> it's so so great. I was watching this video earlier, sat next to Aaron, and I just burst out laughing, and he was just like, "What are you laughing at, Ian?" And I went completely wrecked him. I went, You're welcome. <laughs> it's so great it's perfect it really is um and the insides outsides thing is so true like that bomb shouldn't have even worked if his skin is impenetrable it should have just blown up everything internally and then you still just have a shell of pulpy bits i kind of want to see that more than what we actually yeah. saw like just like the yeah. skin sack collapsing um would have been perfect <laughs> I have a couple other things, but they do lead me into some behind the scenes. So uh, why don't you just uh, give a couple of things that you wanted to say? I had to thank Aaron as well for Butcher, Huey and his dad. They're all played by people that play people in Star Trek as well. So it's like, as Boimler chats with Scotty, McCoy decides to trek this gun all the way out to this counter. And I was like, I kind of paused it and did the math. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're all from different iterations of Star Trek. That's amazing. Well, two of them so were the same iteration. That. Oh no, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon Pegg and Carl Urban will be in the same one, but it's so great. That's such a such a great um, observation. That's always going to tickle me. I'd like to think I would have made the same joke. I hope. Uh, I love the any th any take on this type of sin always gets me. So the lead in is you're just the fish guy, and the sin is that's marine biologist. <laughs> it's so great because you've stuck the ist on the end of it. That that also works as one of our sins. Um, it's so great, so so good. And there's a really subtle joke where the lead-in was, boy, they're blowing so much smoke up Maeve's ass. it's a miracle she doesn't die of lung cancer. And then we, they just start sinning the senator not understanding biology. And then, well, clearly politicians are the experts on how the woman's body works. That was one of them that I wrote down to. Um, this is one of the ones leading into a BTS fact. Mm. But yeah, it's colon cancer seems more likely. But sure, senator, the rectum leads to the lungs. Amazing. But then, like, yeah. the second part of that sin, this is all one sin, is followed by some politicians are clearly the exception on how women's bodies work. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, my behind the sins fact is I asked Aaron, was there concern on whether or not to publish that comment? All I got was no. So, no, because it's right. It, there isn't a better time to put that joke out there than now. And sadly, it isn't a joke. I have one one more sin that doesn't lead to a beyond the sins thing, but it's just you're setting yourself up for a 14 teams in the Big Ten situation and there's nothing you can do about it now <laughs> with the, with the building it. having a seven carved into it. And that's amazing, especially somebody that lives in a Big Ten city uh, because it's never made any sense to me because I got into college football when I moved here. Yeah, And so it's like, hold on, it's the Big heck. Ten, but there's 14 teams? Like... It's even more confusing when you live in England. I don't even know what sport you're talking about. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not the expert to ask on sports. <laughs> I'm just, I, think, I think Big Ten schools, it's the school, not necessarily the sport. So it would be saying football, basketball. Okay, got it. This will be fun. This is a perfect week for you coming on. Uh, because I asked Jonathan, I said, hey, um, you wrote the old bill sin in The Boys. Because calling po the police old mm. bill. Yeah. curious as to what interesting research you came across and if you consulted ian on it i almost said you're resident <laughs> you're resident in, uh englishman on it but I, I didn't i wanted to be specific consulted ian and he said no research other than it's a british term that's been around forever and i thought it would, might be funny to throw in a forgetting sarah marshall reference i don't recall talking to ian about it but i might have nope <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's got to be some history here i did a, a quick google search of something about parliament martial law I, I honestly don't know it's something to do with a bit of legislation but i i don't actually know the origin um i know that the bill is a tv show about the police um but i'm sure it dates back to that but it was always a bit of a cockney thing of oh the old bill are coming round. but i i do not personally know the origin of that one that's just a very very old bit of bit of british slang is it is it still like a piece of, of british slang or is it like one of those like it's old-fashioned like, like, I feel like the, the, the counterpart in America would be saying pig, but I don't feel like people call cops pigs no, much anymore. No, it's not. The old bill isn't really offensive. Um, It's just a description. It would That's, more be pig, like... Pig is also definitely offensive. Yeah, <laughs> it would more be like the cops or the feds, something like that. That would be oh, the, okay. the equivalent, like the feds are coming around or... 5-0, yeah. Uh, the, the other thing I have that led into the keeping tabs was about the note, uh, or it was about <laughs> if you change around the sign, the oh, lettering on man. the sign, you could, you could have it read... 
teased the penis penis and nuts so good <laughs> and, so good like to get so, t's penis and nuts out of that and have so few letters <laughs> left is a work of art it's so great and then it's just ending it with yo is just <laughs> yo especially hearing hearing that in aaron's voice <laughs> It just made me giggle. And then seeing the letters actually be rearranged. It blew my mind. So... I was like, how did they do that? <laughs> like, they did a great job on editing that one together. So good. I asked Aaron about mm. this. And I said, did you or Jonathan write the Tease the Peanuts Nuts Yo Sin? Uh, and he said, me. And I said, do you have any alts on coming up with the <laughs> yes. word combine or anything else fun like that? And also, did the editors hate you for it? And he said that you would have an answer to my first question. Um, yeah, so he managed to find penis and nuts. Um, <laughs> and then like put the rest Horny into... Horny like, Flanders, yep. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Um, found penis and nuts which didn't leave a lot left so i think he put the rest into like an anagram scrambler to find out the rest and it came out with teased uh, yo <laughs> here we go teased the penis nuts yo that's so amazing great. i was just one so of, it good. feels like one of those that like i wonder if aaron had like three or four different things lined up and that was just the best one no i mean as he said as soon as he got to penis and nuts he was like well this is happening like how perfect is it that you got all of the garden right there like that that's that's definitely what it's going to be so uh the other part to that he said uh, we went through a ton of options and the editors made the choice to do the arranging on their own because they're awesome shout out to made in network aaron didn't even ask for they it they just made that they, they just rearranged the letters because they knew it Heck would be yeah. it's hilarious. so good even the yeah. way like the letters float around as if like a ghost is doing it it's, it's really well done it's so good also just reminded me because the way it's framed of those old Captain Underpants books, like yes. where it would always begin with uh, with yeah, them changing the letters. It, it would absolutely Discord. happen in the real world. Kids are absolutely messing with that sign. Uh, did you have anything else about the video? Um, no, I just love it. I hope we get to do more. The wordplay in this was on point, but that is not a surprise with an Aaron script. And yeah, no, I just, I really, really, really want to see more of this show. It's that crossover between our beautifully messed up fans and the boys it's like rick and morty it's such a great that venn diagram of who's going to watch these videos is the boys is right in the middle there well and it will never not be relevant uh, at least oh, at the current totally. age where you have superhero team-up movies and it's yeah. seemingly so many shows that are what if superheroes were bad you mm -hmm. know you got invincible and brightburn and yeah jupiter's legacy uh winner of the week for aaron's favorite script goes to this episode of the boys sorry i know nice. it's not one you written on it but you can't have tease the peanuts and that's yo and nope. did not have it be my favorite and it's as very, we mentioned the the politicians telling people what to do with their bodies uh great yeah mm -hmm. it's an honor that we get to do both stupid and heartfelt in the same video sometimes in the same sin uh so then it leads us to thursday's video death on the nile L let me hear it what do you think about this Mm, man this this movie's dumb so dumb stupid dumb i love kenneth branagh i love his poirot i love his delivery i will watch if they make a third poirot movie with him and i know going in that it's worse than um death on the nile i'll still watch it probably multiple times because i really enjoy being with him it, it's so much fun but this movie man it takes an hour to murder Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he takes an well, hour to death on the nile it and my understanding so of the long. book is he shows up after the murder happens and it feels like that's what they were supposed to do because they handcuffed themselves at the end of murder on the orient express because your yep. man comes up and says hey there's been a murder in egypt but we open this movie with hey well done for solving that murder in egypt so <laughs> that's why i love that sin was like wait so he just solved a death on the nile and now he's gonna solve the death on the nile so that last death was just some random death that happened like what is going on on the nile i don't know if they said death at the end of murder on the orient no, but it did. was definitely there's a situation in egypt they said, they death? said okay. that somebody's been that murdered um in egypt and it's on the nile like they spell out what the sequel is gonna be but then they realize they want to do an hour of setup and build up to confuse the pants <sighs> off of everybody into what is the most obvious reveal. Like there was no, it was never going to be anybody else other than Army Hammer and the other person. I can't remember her name. And 
I, I love this so much because when Chris came in to, so it's me and Jonathan that wrote this. Yes. Chris came in to review. And when Chris jumped in, that's when like this huge debate started between all of us about when could have when could Poirot have actually solved this mystery? And it's like, he could have solved it five minutes after it happened. Like <laughs> he is the reason more people died. He had all the evidence he needed. He didn't need to investigate Book. He didn't need to get Book dead. He as soon as he saw the paint was missing and that rag washed up, um, which showed that stain on it and that it had a bullet hole in it that's all of the evidence he reveals at the end that gets him to who died so we send that in about four different places in different ways and then combined and reduced it into something that was a bit more succinct towards the end because the tricky thing with sending murder mysteries is you know how it ends because you've watched you have to watch the movie so you don't want to sin it too much based on the future knowledge that we have. Is it being internally consistent? So mm. we couldn't really do the, hey, you could have figured this out earlier until the movie's admitted that this is the evidence that he's gathered and that he's showing Because the everyone. idea is this is the narrator's first view, right? In th to be fair to the movie, I think that's pretty much how you have to do it. Unless you're doing a tongue-in-cheek tongue joke about, oh, I guess the movie wouldn't do this. There's still, it's a very pretty movie, but it's like the Egyptian tourist board for 1930 made it. Like, it is all about Egypt and all about sightseeing and takes so long to get to the murder. But, and... but then the problem is, as as The Sin points out, is that it, 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 because of COVID restrictions or whatnot, like, the, the film yeah. hasn't actually shot in Egypt. And then there's that fake shot of an alligator that's yeah. just like, it's so clearly faked and just reminds you that everything in this movie is fake yeah like, and it's like i didn't need an a, a, like your metaphor death on the nile with that crocodile and the bird i didn't need it it was i i got it i get the picture i did not need your terrible cgi crocodile but jonathan summed up with a really like neat sim when he said sadly we're still 30 minutes away from a mystery and considering how easy it is to solve we might be an entire movie away and it's, it's just so great it's like yep there's no actual murder mystery here it's it's pretty much well, and it's, the easiest thing to solve. It's not just that, but they tease the murder like at least three different occasions, which you sin every oh, time because there's the whole like snake jumping at her, and then and then the sin is why is this something to show off as a feat of Poro? So strange. Like physical prowess was not one of his things. It's strange. And then there's the whole like uh, the boulder like almost falling on Gal Gadot. Like it's mm -hmm. man, it's the champagne cork with the gunshot. And I was like, that is one hundred percent a gunshot. But then there's this, this <laughs> and it's just like, 30 people die a year from champagne cork accidents. It would be much easier to just kill her with a champagne cork and call it an accident. And everybody have been like, fine. I love that so much. <laughs> you just had to accidentally aim it that way. And I'm like, you have witnesses as well that will confirm that it's an accident. Like, it's it, your mystery was right there. How fun is your job that essentially writing the script was essentially trying to figure out how to do murder better? <laughs> <laughs> it did make me think. I was like, man, this this Google and then this text is going to really get me into some trouble. If anybody <laughs> I know accidentally dies from a champagne bottle opening, like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> There's some subtlety that's missing from this movie with the amount of lineups that it does. So book does the introductions of all of the suspects before their suspects describing them like not who they are where they come from but why they would want to kill her and i'm like what what do you what do you know that we don't book like why are you assuming that she's going to be dead like it, and then just the lineup when they get onto the boat just going person to person to person it's like we get it somebody's going to die and these are the people you want us to think did it in both of those occasions, neither of the actual murderers are in there. It's just, you don't have to have the big twist, the big aha reveal at the end to be an enjoyable journey. But in a murder mystery, mm, kind of helps. It, it yeah. kind of elevates it a bit if you can pull that off as well. Okay, so I kind of like this movie. Uh, That's fine. And, and, and here's why. I, I don't see this movie as a murder mystery movie. I see this Correct. movie. it's not. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no mystery and there's no murder for two thirds of it. I, I don't see this movie as a murder mystery movie. It's a love movie with a murder mystery backdrop, but specifically it's a cautionary tale of dangerous kinds of love or falling in love with the wrong people. And so I mm -hmm. think in that regard, I really like this movie as a movie itself, as a murder mystery, as anything along those lines. It, it's, it's just, it's bad. 
there's the subplot about the the two old ladies that are together and then no mm-hmm. how taboo is that and then there's the there's the whole like book's mother wanting Praro to spy on them and mm-hmm. there's there's and the, the, way, the ex relationships Jennifer Saunders and Dawn French is like Praro's a dick like he, there is no <laughs> way he thinks they did it like none none of the evidence actually really points to them all he's done is uncover that they're a couple and then broadcast it to the entire ship <laughs> and it has nothing to do with them it's like yeah pat on the back mate well done you you've managed to solve the mystery of the people in love but you didn't have to tell the world about it that's such what a good a point <laughs> it has nothing to do with the murder that's such a good point as as confirmed in the youtube comments like the fact that Poirot has a mustache to, to cover up a scar, like he would still have a scar in his mustache. Like that's not how mustaches work. No, I was always hesitant on sending that because anything to do with like physical appearance, I tried to stay away from. But yeah, Jonathan wrote that in a way that was like, no, that's absolutely right. That is just biologically correct. I don't know how fantastic your follicles are around the scar. I doubt you can craft the moustache that you think he's he's crafting and that's the other like most annoying thing about this movie is the seven minute intro to poirot's moustache like it's not even how he became a detective i don't care that he has a moustache i didn't need its origin story this tells me nothing about poirot at all other than he's a genius which we already know tells you that he has a moustache which i already knew <laughs> <laughs> Tells you why he has a mustache, which frankly doesn't matter. The the two that I specifically thought stood out, I I started writing less since this was the last video I saw, and it's just like, oh, this could be a three hour long podcast if I write down anything I love. Um, Sir, I would not brag about that third time if she only remembers the first two. (laughs) I mean, it's one of those sins I can't believe the movie didn't make the joke. Like, I was waiting for Book to come in and just say, yeah, don't brag about that. And I was like, no one. No one's going to. Okay, I guess I'll make the joke then. And then, like, the army kid was just like, I would never kill her. And then the sin is, except for that time where you pushed a boulder onto her. Like, <laughs> and again, the time where you literally, literally committed attempted, attempted murder. To kill. <laughs> yep. It's just bizarre. And A, there's no reason for him to admit to doing that because there is no proof other than he, like, Poirot guilted him into admitting it. Nobody saw him do it. He didn't have to admit that. And also, it still has nothing to do with the murder because Poirot knows he <laughs> didn't do it. And the the shift at the end where everyone's getting off the boat and he's like, I suppose you'll report me to the authorities. And Poirot's like, nah, you're fine. I was like, what happened to Poirot at the end of Murder of, at the Ori- on the Ori- Orient Express where he's just like, you're all going to prison and you'll have to shoot me otherwise. Where's that Poirot? Like, I want militant Poirot back. Yeah. Oh, I, I meant to ask earlier, um, is, is this one of those that had been in the canon for a while or is this one that was scheduled? Be- I mean, this movie came out in February and so like it just doesn't necessarily feel... The, the thing I can think of is either if you want to go with the release of See How we, see how They Run uh, mm. this week, or, and there's really no way to predict this, but with the, the trailer reveal for Glass Onion. Like, both of those feel like good ways oh, to kind of introduce was this. No way to know that the Glass Onion trailer was coming out, so I'm it's pretty just sure... convenient. Just really, really convenient for us, but I'm pretty sure it lines up with See How They Run. Um, okay. When I first saw it on the schedule, I was like, oh, that's because Bullet Train is coming out. And I was like, wait, no, no, no. This is on a boat, not a train. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Train, boat, same thing. That's the same thing, uh, it's fine. <laughs> a boat is a train on water. Exactly. Um, okay, yeah, so that, that makes sense to see how they run release. And again, mm-hmm. the glass onion thing happens to... Okay, I just yeah, didn't just know if this really was one of those in, that was kind of like in the pipeline and you were like, well, let's go for it. It was always due to come out this week. If I rem- It may have wiggled a little bit, but it was always around this time. But we've had it in the can for three months i think oh wow yeah okay it was one of the first ones i wrote when i got back to england in may or june so we've had this in in the bag for a little while but sometimes that happens when we know there's a date for it it's like let's get that locked in so it's ready to go well and get it done now before you know in especially if it was maybe scheduled to come out later like i'm sure you want to get ahead for so you can have some time around christmas and thanksgiving off like it's always ideal especially if we can give the editors some time off around Thanksgiving and Christmas as That's well. True. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, are, what are some other things you wanted to note from the video you wrote on it? 
so I mean, in terms of the sins, I always like the sins that have like a lot of alliteration. So yep. I enjoyed coming this fall. Follow the form- formative follicular follies of the world's foremost lip foliage in Poirot's moustache or roots. Um, I didn't ask Jeremy to do like any Belgian accent delivery on that, but he did, and I loved it. That was great. His delivery was also great on um, Poirot would solve all the murders at Cinema Sins. And you might ask how many murders happened <laughs> at Cinema Sins HQ, and I would say more than you'd ark. That was, I think that was a combination of me and uh, me and Jonathan that put that together between us. Yeah, it's so, so fun. Um, I think that's, yeah, that was the main things that I had. Yeah, I've ranted about this movie plenty, plenty. And I wrote an obscene amount for this, for this Sins video, as in like the overall Sins in my script. Like I wrote so, so much. There's, I think like 25, 30% of it didn't make it into the video because I just wrote too much. The only other thing I have is this is where I have a comment from the comment section. A uh... Oh, I have one of those too. Oh, cool. I just put, because of the sin that you just talked about, about the murders of Simma, HQ, Simma Sins HQ, uh, Lucy and Divine uh, said, it is with great sadness that we have to say goodbye to Jeremy. He died doing what he loved, sitting movies, and I like to think that's how we would have wanted to go. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Aww. Just a little, little sad goodbye to the narrator. Um, he's coming the- back. <laughs> Yeah, he's back in the he next back sin. The next sin. <laughs> it's fine. There were, there were no actual murders at Cinema Sins HQ. Not there were some week. accidents with like champagne bottles, but no murders. <laughs> my um my favorite comment from this video was Cinema Sins is how I watch movies without paying or waiting two hours. <laughs> I was like, this is a terrible way to consume movies. Please, please do not consume movies through our videos. <laughs> oh, I'm glad man. we're saving you time, but this is terrible. There was one more note that I had. Um, I just remember, and I'm sure Jonathan won't mind me sharing this. He says, um, but it was one of those occasions where I had to explain edging to Jonathan. And it's oh. one of my new favorite things. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the lead in is that Gal Gadot and Army Hammer are making out on like the edge of the pyramid. And the sin is, man, the 1930s version of edging is way more literal than I would have expected. <laughs> I just got a little note from Jonathan saying, I assume this is a sexual thing, but what, what does edging mean? And I was like, Google it. I dare you. I dare you to Google it. I was like, no, I won't. I will not. I will not Google it. But yes, it is a sexual thing. Trust me, this joke is funny. I love that last week I had Jonathan on to ask, how does your daughter feel about your writing? And it's like, oh, like today Ian had to explain edging to me and I got paid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was my day at work, honey. How was yours? Ah, it's fun. <laughs> It's fun stuff. Nice. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of times I've had, like, there's an American bit of slang in the script. And I was like, I'm sure this is funny. Could you tell the Brit what it means? Uh, Google it. Uh, yep. Just just Google safe search. Uh, <laughs> yep. Google safe search edging. All right. So it just leaves commercial sins. Uh, Flaming Hot Doritos. Push it. Uh, mm. Danae wrote on this one. Yeah. Ps, right. ah, ps, push it. I uh, I had a lot on this one because I I loved this video. Oh, um, do it. Love on it. The alligator likely ate the bird as an appetizer directly after this, but at least it was considerate of the bird's final moments. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're going to die in a minute, but open up and listen. And then the uh, the, the, the narrator threatens uh, to add a thousand sins if she takes a selfie uh, because mm. uh, this is the exact kind of thing that they would do. But then the next sin is... This is amazing that this is happening. If a thousand sins, if you don't take a selfie, <laughs> so threatening to do the same thing. <laughs> I the, love the polar it. opposite. You're just you're um, tying the hands of the commercial as like you're getting a thousand sins. It's up to you how you get them. Is such a beautiful back to back on that joke. If you would take a selfie four seconds earlier, thousand sins. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> take a selfie now, negative a thousand sins. It's so good. Yeah. And then unleash your flame and hot. What the fuck does that mean? Because what the fuck does that mean? That's, yeah, that's what does that mean? Tagline. It's whoever's so in marketing dumb. and came up with that needs to be fired. Uh, yeah. And, or just have a stern talking to. Just like use your braid a bit more. Uh, sending the, the fine text that says don't feed the animals when the whole commercial is about feeding <laughs> animals and this amazing experience happened. It's amazing. Like, it's one of my favorite points in the video because it's way deeper than you think it is because. It's actually sinning the dumb things that commercials tell us not to do. So it's like, do not feed the animals. So it's like, well, duh. Like, uh-huh, you think? Like, is that really going to cover you legally? 
Because then why aren't you telling me to not climb a tree? Or like, why aren't you telling me to not interact with a bear? Why aren't you telling me to not run away from that deadly sloth that can run 20 <laughs> miles an hour? Like, there's so much shit in this video you should warn me to not do. Why did you pick don't feed the animals? Well, and if your stance is don't feed the animals, why did you just show me two minutes of people feeding the animals and only good things happening? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, use this as a cautionary tale. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. She just gets eaten at the end. That's the way to solve this video. I mean, yeah, either that or she eats all the animals. Like, someone's winning. Like, somebody, somebody isn't making it out of this commercial alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the last one I wrote is, if you ever see animals like this run, because yes. they're, like, all happy and they take the back run, something is very, very wrong and you need to reconcile your dark secrets and last, and last wishes before the world ends. Amazing. Uh. It's so great. <laughs> it's so, so good. Look, Danae's brain is incredible. And, like, she just manages to craft abstract insanely intricate stories from the 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 smallest bits of content and that's why her commercials are so fun to watch because remember that the the emu at the gym one i can't remember what it was advertising but it's the, uh, emu the, the in, health insurance or, insurance of some uh, sort yeah liberty just, mutual yeah that's it the the because it's the limu emu that's that's the of course it is of course um just the story she crafts with that it's just you go on a little adventure and she's like just hold my hand i'm gonna take you on this journey as we come up with this incredible what if scenario and there is nothing quite like danae's imagination when when you get to sending it's so so much fun yeah such such a good little snippet into her terrifying brain uh, I don't have uh, any keeping tabs, anything like this. I do have a comment section on this video, but I yeah. want to wait unless you have other thoughts on the video itself. Yeah, though, for, I mean, I think between us, we'll probably just read all of the sins because it's such a <laughs> great, great video. Um, you know, there's no reality where a variety of animals converge over fallen flame and fodder on the forest floor to feast without friction. Alliteration, it kills me. It's great. Her mind is incredible. It's unique. This feels like the perfect video for Danae to sin, uh, mm -hmm. because just all the content going on and yeah, how yeah. how angry Danae can get, but the way she can think and mm -hmm. yeah, great. it's great. I love hearing Chris channel Danae's outrage. It's the best. My comment section uh, is is kind of related. It's not actually commercial. It's just about commercial sins. Mm. Uh, but in the Discord channel, which you can join by following the link in the episode description. Yeah, you can. If you want to talk uh, about the podcast in a, in a with a community, um, Lollipop Shoes, Lolly, woo. Lolly says, uh, if writers are rotated for commercial sins, does that mean there's a possibility of a UK ad when it's Ian's turn and she tagged you? Cough, cough. Mm. Folder or scruncher? Cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a list of UK commercials that I would like to do. I can absolutely do them. However, I'm a numbers guy. And statistically, the commercials that do best are the ones that are very American and have them themselves a lot of views as well. So I've been running through the Old Spice commercials at the minute because yeah. I love them to death. And they're yeah. some of the most watched commercials on YouTube. So I'm just like, yeah, let's go after them. Let's do it. The UK, I just don't know if the UK commercials are going to have enough pull to to make it onto the channel but i'm definitely once i've gone through old spice i'm definitely going to do some some of my favorite english channels so yeah tweet at us any commercial any uk commercials that you want us to cover and i'll i'll add it to my list but uh, yeah it's it's a tricky balance this this ad also reminded me of there and i was really hoping commercial scenes doesn't do outtakes uh but if i were to write an outtake so i guess here's another like segment of of aaron writes a sin that you know <laughs> nice. only gets real of this podcast because there's an old, look, back when Family Guy was good, they had some good stuff there. And one of the in one of the first seasons, there's this cutaway gag of these two guys that get in a car accident, but one of them is enjoying chocolate and one of them is enjoying peanut butter. And then they go mm. through the window, and then the officer is, comes up and says, "Hi, I'm Officer Reese's. What is the problem? They got peanut butter in my chocolate." <laughs> <laughs> and then the officer shoots them both and runs away. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's that's a clever gag. And, that's and, perfect and for this ad. Given that this is the mending of flaming hot Cheetos and Cool Range Doritos, I would have loved. It works to just, on a. I would have loved to put few that different in. levels. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, there you go. So if Aaron were a staff member, that's what he would have done. Amazing. Uh, now we no longer have to wonder. Now we know.
Well, I think that should cover everything, which means we're done with the content for this week, which means we just move into Beyond the Sinner, right? Woo! Let's do it. So tell me about yourself. We're all sinners. Every one of us. And what happens to sinners? Get to know each other better, you know? See, Daddy? Sinners have soul, too. The information! It's too much! Walk away, Mark. Just walk away. Okay, so we decided to move this back uh, from the top of the show to the bottom of the show. That way we really get in this inside scoop right away. And so, uh, Ian, I'm going to ask you, first of all, the same questions I asked Jonathan last week. If you had to describe Cinema Sins to somebody who had never heard of the channel, how would you do it in one sentence or two? Mm, well, I have a 14-page um, thesis that I'd like to share with you now, so nope. buckle in, everybody. This is a great time to move to 2.5 speed. No, um, you can, you can, content you can PDF it to the Discord, but... <laughs> yes, amazing. Um, no, like, Cinema Sins, um, without getting too cheesy and sentimental, it is, um, for me, just this awesome community of fans and people that are passionate about movies and content in general, and just enjoy making and watching these tongue tongue in cheek videos that send up the content that we all enjoy. Like we all see these things in movies, we all roll our eyes, we all enjoy them regardless. It's just really, really fun to point them out and hopefully the videos will make you make you think. I hope they definitely make you laugh and Really, they're just uh, an excuse for me to put as many Star Trek references out there as, as I possibly can. <laughs> that's, if I'm going to sum up, sum up Cinema Sins, that's what it is for me. But like I said earlier, I love that the majority, so, so many comments are just filled with, I love this movie, I'm so glad you're sending it. And I'm like, you're insane and I love you, that's great. It's like, <laughs> ruin the thing I love, do it. So then uh, you're you're celebrating what this is pretty close to about a year of being on staff full time, right? Yeah. So October the eighth was when I was officially full time. Um, I was kind of part time contractor for six months before that. Yeah, six months. Um, so yeah, coming up to a year of being full time doing this, it's a, an insane, insane ride, and I'm yeah super duper grateful for yeah the the awesome people I work with and just the crazy job i get to do every day it's so much fun well congratulations by the way thank you so uh, but i mostly bring that up because the channel is coming up on its 10 year anniversary which means you were not around for eight and a half years of it in any professional capacity so surely no. you have to have some favorite sins that have ever been published on the channel mm. and or a favorite running gag or two yeah i mean like i said earlier i love the i love alliteration and there's a few more examples that are some of my favorites um Cloud Atlas has a great one, which was, it opens up with Tom Hanks just staring at a campfire, just talking to himself, and it's Haggard Hanks harks haphazardly, hoping humanity heeds his hyperbole, which is like, when you can do that without a single non-H word, like, and make it a sentence that makes sense, that's so, that's so much fun. Oh, it's a night. And Babbitt's ballin, wind bind a bone. Haggard Hanks harks haphazardly, hoping humanity heeds his hyperbole. And these ones aren't always the... This is a great thing to say, isn't it? These ones aren't always the funniest, but it's the ones where there's a good amount of research that's gone into them. So mm. there's a video that's coming up that they are... There is some racing involved, and they are not in the location that they say they are. And we found this out by looking at monuments and street names. So it was like, we're going to Google lens the monuments and we're going to type in the street names and then try and triangulate where they actually are. And it was like, oh, you're in Georgia. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not where you say you are at all. And it's so obvious because that monument isn't where you said it was. So there's just, it's those thinkers where it's it's just like, man, you you did some research on that for this one second gag that, and then just bam, move on to the next sin. And we pack so many jokes into the videos. Like every every single second needs a laugh, basically. So to, to get the factual stuff in there that's funny as well is, is so much fun for me. But yeah, I mean, all of the running jokes we have, I really, really like. They survive this, won't be needing this anymore. There's just this awesome balance of bread and butter stuff that we do a lot and then new actual thinky, thinky talking points. For sure. Oh, I've yep. got another one if you like. I'll just chuck in another one. Do it. There was this one from Loki, which does the setup and then turns it into just a super complicated way of saying it. So Loki gets thrown out of the window. So the narrator starts by saying, 
the sin here is being thrown for a train window before your intended stop after drinking too much alcohol or predestination station defenestration post intoxication <laughs> if you will <laughs> i was like yep there's a thing for that there, there, we now have a there's a condition for for being thrown out of a window after being drunk <laughs> Being thrown through a train window before your intended stop after drinking too much alcohol. Or predestination station defenestration post-intoxication, if you will. So the other part of this segment is I wanted to give a chance to get to talk to you about something non-pop culture related. So as a, uh, you're kind of more of a hybrid UK and US at the moment, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I spend a lot of time over here now. Wait, I haven't, I, I didn't get to tell this story because obviously we haven't had BTS for a week, but I got stopped. At, at customs and hijacked because i have been visiting the country too much <laughs> now to come into america you need something called an ester it's like it's an electronic something 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 but instead of applying for a visa you can apply for this document and you don't have to have a visa you can just come over here and you can come over here for 90 days at a time and then you have to go back the problem is the coming back after that because it doesn't specify how long to stay away. In all of my research, it just says, use your best judgment. And I'm like, what? That's <laughs> that's needlessly vague. <laughs> Disconcerting? So like, uh, no, no, my, concerning. It's concerning. Concerning, <laughs> yeah. It's like, my best judgment is a week because I like being here, but that's probably not what your judgment is. So yeah, they took me to one side and was just like, we need you to explain what you're doing here. And I was like, well, uh, I'm visiting friends. And I'm like, well, what do you do for work that allows you to do this? And I was like, oh, I'm a writer. And they're like, oh, okay, well, what do you write? I was like, I write about movies. Uh, for who? And I was like, for YouTube. And it just got worse and worse and worse. Like, yeah, I write for movies on YouTube. And then they just let me through. And I'm like, so what did I need to say to get withheld longer? Like, that was pretty sketchy. Because that doesn't necessarily involve you could do that job remotely 100 <laughs> percent, and i think that's essentially why they let me in is because i haven't this is too I've stupid never to make up. my welcome <laughs> yeah it's too stu i'm too honest uh i haven't overstayed my welcome once i've always stuck to the terms it doesn't specifically say i can't do this but yeah they were making so many notes on my passport and i was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> they're making way more notes than the things i'm saying <laughs> so what are you doing here uh oh well, there was a champagne accident over in the uk and yeah. that's coming back. <laughs> you may have seen that the queen died recently <laughs> I, I had to thought, leave the country i thought about making that joke uh but i <laughs> thought if... i can't you can't no nope. yeah that's fair it's like yeah you can i can bully my brother but you're not allowed to <laughs> <laughs> yes yes very much <laughs> that's amazing fun custom story uh, what yep. are some other things we already <laughs> talked about like different portion sizes uh what mm. are some what are some things that you have thought are are really weird uh, or strange about american society and what are some things that you kind of miss about uk that you would just like americans to experience mm. so language and slang is definitely the biggest thing that i come up with day to day where it's so different and it's not like offensively different it's just sometimes confusing and one of the big ones which is difficult because I love this place so much is how I say tacos. Um, and <laughs> yep, I, I like Taco Bell quite a lot. And we don't really have Taco Bell in England, but I, I apparently can't say taco properly. So it's like, what is it? Taco? Is it you ta taco? taco? Yeah, you, you say it like the way that people say Walmart and Target. Like the, <laughs> you say it like Tag the people it. that are like deliberately like Taco Bell. Like <laughs> Taco, taco Bell. Bell. Like, what am I, I, don't, I honestly don't know what. So I can't order tacos at Taco Bell. I'm like, I, I, and I, luckily I love burritos, but every time I go up to the drive thru, it's like, I'll have two tacos, please, and just try and get through it as quickly as possible. And I'm sure the drive thru people just by default say, Excuse me, what was that? Like, even if they think they heard me, because there's an accent on it, they're just like, No, you're going to have to repeat that again because I want to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> so just give me my tacos. It's one of my most favorite things but actually day to day it can become a bit of a bother as well sure. but um one of my favorite things when we're doing scripts is is getting asked like is this offensive like in england <laughs> like, can i say this 
So I think Aaron I can say it, you can't say it. (laughs) That's exactly it. Aaron said, is saying limey offensive? And I was like, for me, no, I don't think so. I know it's like, it is a slang term for somebody from England. And I think it's one that the Australians use more. But yeah, I don't think I find any offense with that. But there's also like some fact checking that goes on. So Daniel asked me about, I think Charity Canvassers was in the Rick Lantis mix up. Yeah, the same was charity canvases, and then he seemed that they're called charity muggers in the UK. And he was like, "Is that true? Is that actually a thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, the ones that like hang around shops and try to get you to sign up for things. We call them charity muggers." Huh. Um, and he was just like, "That's weird." <laughs> like, happy to oblige, sir. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But one of the, there's two that really, really blew my mind, and one of the actually this one blew my mind, and the next one blew. Aaron Dice's mind. The one that blew my mind was drive through banks. Oh. It's like, what? Like, I, I, Aaron said, like, we, we need to go to the bank and he was making a deposit or something. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I need to change the people in England only gave me $100 bills. I need to change some of these into something I can use. And we just drove. And I was just like getting the seatbelt off. And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, well, we've got to go into the bank. And I was like, where's the front door? And he just like pulled up to the window and started talking to the lady. And I'm like, what are we doing? I was like, it's a drive through. I was like, do, like, does America have to drive through everything? Yes, like- we do. Yes. The concept of stick your mo- stick your cash in a vacuum and somebody will get it on the other side. Like <laughs> Exactly. Trust it'll be okay. Like it, it baffled me. And it's just the whole like kind of hit and run sort of element to it. I was like, why would you ever need to be in that much of a hurry to get to the bank? Like that you need to use the drive through? We're not. We're just lazy. It makes sense, but it's it's just something we don't have in England. What's wild is the one closest to the window has a bigger box, so you can mm. do more in it. Uh, you you might drive by and overhear people like legitimately making like big savings transactions, mm. like in the, in their car through a window. Like it's crazy. It's like I just kind of want a suit and tie sort of thing to my banking. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of cash as my payment at the moment, and so mm. I go into the bank with cash because, again, mm. that whole, like, stick a bunch of cash in a vacuum and hope it works out. Like, Yeah, I'm uh, just like, mm, I want like, to Like, I know, it. like, this is a tried and true system, but... Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> I, I can get out and walk five steps. So. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I would do I the same. I, so I think I know the one that blew Aaron Dicer's mind. Uh-huh, go on. Lemonade. Yeah, it is. And it was so strange because it's something I've known... So my first trip to America was when i was 21 i remember just like oh lemonade this is so great it's not fizzy it's incredible so i've always known the difference so when i came back here and i was just enjoying some lemonade and i said i really really miss this when when i'm in england and he went oh do you not have it and i said no no no, we have lemonade but it's fizzy and he went what <laughs> what do you mean you have lemonade but it's fizzy I was like yeah no no what we call lemonade is like seven up or sprite it's like a carbonated soda lemonade like i don't have another word for it so if you ask for a lemonade you're gonna get a sprite or a seven up something like that and it just it blew his mind it was like so what do you do with actual lemonade then (laughs) we just don't have it and it's just something you can go your whole life not needing to know not knowing and part of me like wishes i'd waited until like he came to england (laughs) and i'm like order a lemonade i dare you (laughs) and just like (laughs) see the horror on his face when he's like well this is a seven up (laughs) oh man Crazy. It's wild. There's no lemonade. No lemonade in England. Not not as you guys know it. Well, I mean, every, all the drinks are different because the FDA doesn't care about whether we live to 40 or not. Um, sugar. Sugar man. Sugar. Yeah. Which, as an American, it's so bad traveling to the UK because you're like, I want a Coke. And then what you get is kind of Coke. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it's, yeah. it's significantly less Coke than you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, like, quantity-wise, significantly less Coke. Right. Right. It, yeah. It's like 750 milliliters or something like uh-huh. that. Instead of, yep. And it's the measurements tiny. are all off because the imperial system. Um, <laughs> We're sticking by it. <laughs> As you should. We're the ones that need to change. Because uh, the rest of the world has. Is there anything that you, like, wish that Americans got to experience that uh, is commonplace in the UK? Honestly, chip shops fish and chips mm. like what i love here is the convenience of drive throughs and the variety so we basically have mcdonald's sometimes a kfc will have a drive through burger king will have a drive through but our 
variety of drive throughs is so, so, so limited. But we mm. tend to do a lot more home cooking as a general rule. But one thing... Well, and there's less people driving cars, depending on the city size. It's a lot, yeah, of, it's exactly. a lot more bus, bus and train transit. Yeah, and we, yeah, we do have kind of more consistent public public transport because we're smaller we're just we're a smaller island everything is a little bit closer together but chip shops are a gift there is no equivalent food group over here and by chips i mean fries but they're they're thicker they're yeah. fluffy they're yeah. they're incredible the uh, battered fish is so so good i would miss that if i ever moved to america i would deeply deeply miss the fish and chip shop and a, and a nice mm. kebab which is different like again you guys don't have kebabs over here as well um uh, i would miss we have their so, different so much. yeah you and, have kebabs and... but it's like lemonade <laughs> 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 totally different um I, yeah uh, that's the first meal i would take anybody to go and go and have is a, a good fish and chips i spent a week in edinburgh one week uh, one mm. year i went to a chippy and mm-hmm. uh, we went to several but one night i was feeling frisky and mm-hmm. uh american so <laughs> i ordered a deep fried mars bar oh heck yeah chippy, that's a thing uh, which is you know, fine the problem is they are frying them in the same oil that they've been frying fish for the entire yes, day absolutely so you have a deep fried mars bar that also tastes like fish which <laughs> is not as gross as it sounds but it's it also not incredible. good <laughs> oh it sounds incredible to me the, the problem i have is that they get nuclear like the mars bar inside the batter is hotter than the sun it's ridiculous um yeah. but that when they first that when that chip shop first came out with the batter the deep fried mars bar it made national news like, i think i was 13 or 14 when they first decided we're gonna do this and it was just it swept the nation it was it was hilarious and it just became a gimmick and what's crazy is if you go to the state fair everything is deep fried (laughs) yeah of course (laughs) i'm sure you could just walk up to anybody and be like will you put this in the fryer and they'll be like sure why not (laughs) yeah why not what we what are you gonna do wrap it in batter fry it do it very nice. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we just have one more segment to cover. We just got to do a quick recommend, warn, or recommend with some Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Ian, what is that thing you got? So you're going to love this, and I think we could probably talk for an hour and a half about it. It is the rehearsal. Oh, okay. I've seen the pilot, and that's been it. First of all, what you need to do before you watch the rehearsal is binge watch four seasons of Nathan for You. Nathan Fielder is, as Aaron Dyser has said, either a genius or a maniac, one of the two. And I don't know which one he, which one it is. I said genius or sociopath. Sociopath. It's one of the two, maybe both. Um, Nathan for You, it, he basically tries to help small businesses with wacky ideas. And so it'll be like, uh, we'll give you gas for like 50 cents a litre however the only way you get that money back is through a rebate and to claim the rebate you have to climb a mountain and then put it in this box and it works like it absolutely (laughs) works like people come in they pay full full price for the fuel and then they have to fill in this form for the rebate and nobody like there's only three people that go and have the rebate so he just does maniacal things like that but the rehearsal is just incredible the premise is that you've got an important moment in your life like you want to share some news you want to rehearse something that's very very important nathan creates the environment for you to practice that using actors different permutations and you can rehearse this important moment as many times as you like until you're ready for every possible outcome that you could conceivably predict um and then you're prepared for the answers whether it's a good reaction bad reaction no reaction you're prepared for it the show spirals into something completely different that is still exactly what i think he intended to happen it's so clever it says so much about society expectations what we think certain things in our life are going to be like how you can't prepare for every eventuality but it is built into us to want to do that and how valuable that is and futile at the same time and just in this 
largely 99% non-judgmental way where the great thing about Nathan Fielder is that he doesn't really pass judgment if somebody says something completely wackadoodle he'll just be like okay oh I thought this was the case oh okay and just lets the person dig their own hole of ridiculousness and he's just like huh interesting (laughs) um it's high super duper high recommend and I cannot wait to see what whatever he does next. He is he's so so good. It's the rehearsal season two is what he's doing next. For real? It's been renewed. Oh yeah. heck yeah. I mean, maybe not next, but it's been, but it's definitely been renewed. Oh, let's go. Yes. Which is funny because it was renewed like two days after Batgirl was cancelled. So everybody's like, okay, oh, what's going okay, on? Okay, like, no, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, losing one thing does not mean we shouldn't enjoy another. But yeah, I see I see what you mean. So I have a recommend, a big recommend, because I went to the movies this week and I saw Bodies, 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 and I Oh nice. Can't stop thinking about how much I love this movie. Have you seen this one? Oh, that's great. I haven't. So I watched the trailer because I'm a dick and i watch trailers <laughs> and it put me off i was like i felt like from the trailer i know what you're going for here it's not for me and to my discredit i shouldn't do that to be completely honest because the reviews are incredible Ev- like aaron and yourself have now both said they love it so i'm gonna have to watch this movie aaron dicer is the perfect person to want to talk about this movie as soon as you see mm-hmm. it it's got one yeah. of those brilliant final moments where you're like i need to speak to somebody about it now and I've nice. been that's been burning inside me for a week. Uh, oh, amazing. Because the trailer portrays it as here's a new teen slasher, ready or not style kind of here's kind of meta. Yeah, yeah. Here's a game that people play it and all of a sudden there's somebody's actually killing somebody instead of playing a game. Mm-hmm. The trailer presents this I'll, I'll say this and I'll shut up. The trailer presents <laughs> this as a celebration of Generation Z mm-hmm. when in actuality it's a critique of generation z interesting um, okay so because the trailer looks like oh project x or 100 oh, that's what like, put me off all, yeah no it is it is absolutely by the by the time the movie ends it is a full-on critique i can't wait to watch this movie again and oh, i can't amazing. wait like i'm just dying to talk with people about it so bodies 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 in theaters right now it'll be out sometime i think uh, awesome. next month yeah um, love it i'm so, gonna have to watch that yeah and then talk to dicer about it Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh well that'll do it for this week thanks again to ian for hanging out thank you for having me of course i uh look forward to doing it again heck yeah uh ian do you want to promote any social medias anything like that for people to connect with you uh yeah come find me on twitter that's mainly where i'm sort of active at witsind uh w-h-i-t-t-s-i-n-n-e-d and go and have a listen to captain's pod if star trek is your thing or if it isn't your thing because we have plenty of people that enjoy the show and have never watched it before so at the minute we're going through season three of lower decks we are instapodding it as each episode lands we we are live on twitch on mondays at 12 central so it gives you the weekend to watch the episode and then we'll do a big old spoiler discussion and then um yeah basically do the podcast live Woo-hoo. live podcasts everybody not just patrons too good job yeah um, applause Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and you can follow me if you want on twitter or letterboxd at schweik castle i'd love to hear your feedback on the how the show is going as well so if you have that uh you can send that to bts at cinemasins.com so i'd love to hear your feedback on how you think the show is going or if you're watching the videos through the week and you're like there's a story behind here i really want to know it dm so i can ask uh the the staff here the wonderful staff here uh that are volunteering their time to hang out here i guess not them. So anyway uh, <laughs> wait what <laughs> this is volunteer <laughs> that's better that's better <laughs> And lastly, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're listening to. Uh, Make sure to come back next Thursday for more Behind the Sins content. Bye! Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to bts at cinemasins.com and be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash bts. Living my best life like every other white girl, you know? I'm 90% sure I'm recording, so let's record a 90-minute show on the hope that it works. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. If you can see your lines, yep. <laughs> you're just having fun now? Yep. <laughs> Amazing. I wasn't stressed out at all, and then I put together the first episode, and I was just like,
people aren't going to like this. Making money out of podcasts is tricky. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> as long as you can see the lines and then you're pretty confident that you're recording on your end. Yep. Do, do you have your buttons labeled or are you just pushing stuff at random? Because I have really crappy eyes. The buttons are labeled, but I can't read them. So the answer <laughs> is yes and yes. What does this do? And then I've also got that one. Nice. I don't, I don't have that. I have this, which is way more impressive. That's way more yeah. important. Thank you. 100%. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I, I, I would add a CinemaSins ding. That would be fun. I'm amazed that Aaron doesn't already have a ding on here. That would be incredible. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to do you don't want to do a ding and then immediately it's like, whoa, okay, no, wrong button. Let <laughs> me do that joke again. You don't want. Hang on. Podcasting supercuts. How do they work? <laughs> <laughs> I, I kept on making the comment. I was like, I have a theory that Aaron has gotten Ian into Malcolm McDowell, like not not Malcolm Gladwell, which they're joking about in Discord. And I'm like, no, I'm 100% convinced that the butler from Disney's The Haunted Mansion is also a world-renowned sociologist. Like, But the, the worst thing is that Jonathan went along with it. <laughs> like, you're both talking about different people, but both agreeing. When I was recording with Jonathan, he was like, you should have Ian on next week. Because I remember he's on the two Simba since, and he has very strong feelings on both of the things that he talked about. <laughs> so I do. I really do. Especially, um, especially both of them, to be honest. I was going <laughs> to pick one. One, but no we'll kick off with the monday video rick and morty three by seven no i demand the old format see here's the fun part you don't have creative control anymore uh oh no <laughs> wait 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 i did at some point <laughs> what <laughs> i don't even have my own segment anymore <laughs> no what is i could play the bumper I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> uh, you just put the bumper in randomly. Just... It's the power I have. I could do it, but I'm not going to. Cool trick. And um, I mean, you're, brains... I mean, you're not that far off yourself, but thank you, sir. Maybe one day I'll I'll be up there with Dicer. But cool. Let's trick. not get too far ahead of ourselves. No, let let's no. I'll always be able to say regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I am talking out of my English bottom right now. Oh, you Americans! It's always about size. It's got very choke me daddy kind of vibes. Uh, <laughs> it, I guess so. Yes, it kind of does. Outtakes. Uh, <laughs> no context. No context. Just choke me daddy. <laughs> now I have to go find those and put them in the episode. Fun. Because <laughs> I did it once and now I have to do it every time. Yeah, uh, you do. Um, <laughs> Outtakes? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Or DM the CinemaSins Twitter at CinemaSinsBTS. Would love to hear your thoughts, what? your feedback. <laughs> that made no sense. <laughs> I know. Happy something day.